In this video, I want to talk about Gauss-Jordan elimination and Gauss, uh, regular Gaussian elimination, and how to do both of those and what the differences are. So both of these are used to solve systems of linear equations. They're basically just um, an easier way to do it than what you learned in, say, like Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or something like that. So here I have an example. I've got three equations. I've got x plus y plus 2z equals 9, 2x plus 4y minus 3z equals 1, and 3x plus 6y minus 5z is 0. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put these in a matrix. So I take the coefficients of all these numbers. So the first column is going to be the x column, and the coefficient of these are 1, 2, and 3. My second column will be the y's. So I take all the coefficients of the y's, that's 1, 4, and 6. The third column will be the z's. That's 2, negative 3, negative 5. And then I draw this bar that's kind of like the equals. And here I put the, the constants 9, 1, and 0. So this is called my augmented matrix. Um, I don't really need this anymore. And now I'm going to use what are called row operations. So basically, I can add rows to other rows, or I can subtract rows to other rows, or I can multiply rows by a constant or a fraction. So those, those are the basic operations I'm, gonna, I'm going to be using. And my goal for the Gaussian elimination is to get a 1 and then zeros underneath it. So my I'm going to have a leading 1, which is already what I have here, and then zeros underneath. Okay, and then we'll see what happens after that. So right here, I already have one, so there's nothing to do, but I want zeros underneath it. So I need to add my first row in some way so that I'll get a zero underneath it. Since this is a one, I need to get it to a two, and in fact, I need to get rid of this two, I'm going to do minus 2 times row 1 plus row 2 becomes my new row 2. So this is the notation that you're going to use. So this says I have minus twice row 1, and I'm adding that to row 2, and that becomes my new row 2. All right. So minus 2 times row 1, that would be minus 2, minus 2, minus 4, minus 18. So I'm just taking minus 2 times each of these numbers. And then if I add these correspondingly, we'll see what happens. So I've got minus 2 plus 2 is 0. I've got minus 2 plus 4 is 2. I've got minus 4, minus 3 is minus 7, and I've got minus 18 plus 1 is minus 17. So that was my first operation. So I did minus 2 times the first row, and I added it to the second row. So I've, I've accomplished part of my goal in getting zeros underneath this 1, but I want zeros all the way down. So basically, I want this 3 to turn into a 0. Can you guess how I might do that? Well, I want to take my first row, and this time I'll multiply it by a minus 3, so I can add it to my third row, and that will cancel out this 3. So that's how I'm picking these numbers, so I can get rid of the numbers right underneath. So if I take minus the first row times 3 plus the third row becomes my new third row. So what's minus 3 row 1? Well, that'll be minus 3, minus 3, 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, minus 3 times 9 is minus 27. And now I'm going to add this to the third row. I'm going to add the components together. So I have minus 3 plus 3, that's 0. I have minus 6 plus, or I'm sorry, minus 3 plus 6 is positive 3. They've got minus 6, minus 5, that's minus 11. And I have minus 27 plus 0, so minus 27. 
So that's my first step. And now I've accomplished my goal of having zeros below this leading one. So now what I do, now that this row is done, I move to the second row. And now I want my leading one again. Well, I've got a zero, so that's fine where it is. We already said that was fine. But now here's a two. I want this to be a one. I want this two to not be there. I want a one and then zero is underneath. So I'm gonna take this row and I'm gonna multiply it by a half to get rid of that two. So I take one half of row two and that becomes my new row two. In other words, I'm just dividing each term by two. So that's two divided by two is one, minus seven divided by two is minus seven halves, minus 17 divided by two is minus 17 over two. And now what do we do? Well, I want a zero right underneath this, so I need to take minus three times row two, minus three times row two plus row three becomes my new row three. Notice how I'm using the row right above it to get rid of the zeros below. So let's look at this. It's gonna get a little involved, but I'm sure you'll be all right. So minus three times zero is zero. I'm not even gonna bother writing it. Minus three times one is minus three. Minus three times minus seven halves. Well, minus and minus is a plus. Three times seven is 21 halves. Over here, minus and minus is a plus. Three times 17, let's see, three times 10 is 30. Three times seven is 21. I think that's gonna be 51 halves. Ugly number, sorry. And now, what's gonna happen, if I add these component-wise, I have zero plus zero is zero. Minus three plus three is zero. And maybe I should change these to over two so I can use these fractions. So minus 11 is 22 over two. Minus 27 is minus 54 over two. So I've got 21 over two minus 22 over two. That's minus one over two. And I've got 51 over two minus 54 over two. That's minus three over two. And now I've accomplished my goal of a leading one with zeros underneath. Now I go to my very last row. I have zero, zero, they're good. I want this to be a one, so what do I have to do to get rid of a one half? How do I make negative one half one? Well, if I do minus two times row three, make that my new row three, that should do the trick. So if I multiply this by minus two, minus two times minus a half is one, minus three halves times two is positive three. And now I've got a one with zeros underneath. So now this, what I've done here, the leading ones with zeros underneath, this is row echelon form. Okay, I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called. And this is as far as you would go with Gaussian elimination. You would put it in row echelon form. And you could solve your system like this. So here's how we would solve the system. I look here, I basically have 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 3. And this simply means that z equals 3. I can just read the answer. I've got 1z equals 3. Let me look at my second equation. I've got 0x plus 1y minus 7 halves z equals minus 17 halves. But I just found out that z was 3. So let me plug 3 in for z. That's y minus 7 halves times 3 equals minus 17 halves. That's y three times seven is 21 halves equals minus 17 halves. And now if I add 21 halves over, 
minus 17 plus 21 is four halves or two. So I know that y equals two. And then I look at my very first equation. I've got x, 1x plus 1y plus 2z equals nine. But I know what y is. y is two plus 2z. I know what z is. z is three, which means that x equals, let's see, uh, I've got nine minus two times three is six minus two. It's gonna be uh, three minus two. I think that's gonna be one. Yes, okay, and there you have it. You've solved the system of equations using Gaussian elimination. So you see how that works? We got these leading ones. We got rid of everything underneath, so there were zeros under the leading ones. And then I did this back substitution thing. I started from the bottom, and I substituted, I solved the second equation, and I substituted to get the first equation. That's Gaussian elimination. But if you want to do Gauss-Jordan elimination, we want to put it in reduced row echelon form. So this is row echelon form. Gauss-Jordan is reduced row echelon form. And what that is, is that's just ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing, but uh, I'm just going to be using the matrix. I'm not going to be doing using equations and substituting. So just like I got zeros underneath the ones, now I want zeros above the ones as well. So now I start with my third row. And I think, what can I, how can I add my third row to my second row so that there's a zero right here? Well, since this is already a one, if I take seven halves, times my row three, and I add it to my row two to make that my new row two, that should cancel the thing out right above. Because I've got zero, zero, seven halves times one is seven halves, and then seven halves times three is 21 halves. And now I add this to my second row. Zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, 7 halves minus 7 halves is 0, as desired. And then 21 over 2 minus 17 over 2, that's 4 over 2, and we found that to be 2. And would you look at that, I can already read that y equals 2, just like we found using Gaussian elimination. And now I'm going to do almost the same thing. I'm going to have to use the third row and the second row and add it to the first row to get rid of the zero, or to get rid of this number and this number. So to use the third row to get rid of this two, since I want zeros all the way up, I'm gonna have to do two times row three, in fact, minus two times row three, add it to row one, and that'll be my new row one. So minus two times my third row, that's zero, zero, minus two, minus two times three is minus six. And now if I add this to my first row, zero plus one is one, zero plus one is one, minus two plus two is zero, and then minus six plus nine is three. We're almost done. Now that I have zeros completely above this one, I just need a zero above this one right here. So I'm just gonna take minus row two plus row one to give me my new row one. And now I'm just adding the negative this to this. So that's zero minus one, zero minus two. If I add this to this, zero plus one is one. Minus one plus one is zero. Zero plus zero is zero minus two plus three is one. And now this is in reduced row echelon form. And that's how you do Gauss-Jordan elimination. And you'll notice that we can just read off the answers like we got last time. X equals one, Y equals two, and Z equals three, just as before. So that's how you do Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination 
just as a refresher Gaussian elimination, you do row echelon form. Gauss Jordan elimination is reduced row echelon form. I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this and have a great day.